Welcome to Words of Aloha with Pastor Izzy Manzo of Amazing Grace Ministries International. We're headquartered in Kailua Kona on the Big Island of Hawaii. Join us now as we get into God's Word. Well, guys, let's uh, look to the Lord to get help us be able to focus, even with the wind blowing around us. This is nothing. I mean, think of our brothers and sisters back east with the uh, snow. You know, we have a little wind, maybe a light, light amount of precipitation. You know, like, ooh, we're freezing, you know. Such w- we, are, we are such babies in Hawaii, you know. <laughs> yes, you especially, Dottie. She's... Well, she, she's, she's um, what do we call, uh, ch- challenged in the area of insulation. So she, she, she gets a pass on be feeling cold. But um, hey, Jared, where are you, Jared? We baptized you. Hey, come here, brother. I have something for you that Holland made up. Guys, Jared got baptized into Christ a couple weeks ago. So we rejoice with him. And uh, here's your baptism certificate, brother. And, and uh, we just rejoice. He gets to walk in newness of life with the Lord. So bless the Lord. And uh, h- hang in there, brother. I, I, I welcome you to the, the good fight of faith, it's called. And um, it is a fight. You know, we do have struggles in our faith. But just hang in there, guys. It's, it is a fight that is worth it. And it's, a, it's an awesome thing. So this morning, we're going we're gonna to continue our study in the book of Galatians. If you want to turn to Galatians chapter 6. The last um, verse of chapter 5 of Galatians, uh, Paul, as he was writing to the churches there, he, he, he was telling them in verse 26, if we, if we live by the Spirit, he said, let us also what? Walk by the Spirit. Okay, we're, we're called into walking by the Spirit of God. And so we want to do that together. And um, it says, let us not become boastful. Let us not challenge one another, and let us not envy one another. How much trouble do you think challenging and envying one another has caused in the body of Christ? You know, folks that just want to, our church is better than your church, or I'm better than you are, and, and that, that's a big trap. I want to encourage you, don't fall for that trap. That's, a, that's something the enemy wants people to get sucked into, to get distracted. And we're not here to get distracted. We're here to walk in the Spirit and, and to be fruitful people. As we've been studying the fruits of the Spirit, we want those fruits to just be being produced in our lives in such a way that, they, that people see them. They, they see the love and the joy and the peace, the patience, the kindness, you know, the gentleness, the goodness, the self-control, those things, it says, which against there is no law. Now this morning, chapter 6 of the... Now, m- just so you remember... Were these chapters in, in the writings of Paul? Did he put chapter 1 and then write the, the verses, chapter 2, and then na- no. He, th- we put those in afterwards so that we could, we could find and, and, and you know, relate to one another quickly where the spot is in the Scripture. So this wasn't actually in the Scripture chapter distinctions. So I want, if you could do me a favor, in your mind, erase the idea that we're going to another chapter. Just continue it as the thought, like someone's writing a letter. And they just flow from that thought right to the next thought that they want to share in their letter. Because that's what he does. The very next chapter, chapter 6, verse 1 of Galatians, reads, Brethren, if anyone is caught in a trespass, you who are spiritual, it says, restore such a one in a spirit of gentleness. Each one looking to yourself. Okay, we want to look to ourselves so that we too might not be what? Tempted. You know, when you, when you see a brother caught in a trespass, it says we have to actually look, look to ourselves. And I'm going to have to put my glasses back on because there's like sand blowing in my eyes. This is a first. I'm trying to, to teach to you and have, um, I just got an eyeful. I have a preach like, like um, Ray Charles. Okay. Good thing I memorized this part. I can't see anything. You gotta, you know, I have learned from from being a preacher on a beach. You gotta learn to be flexible. It's just the way it goes, you know. My, my mother-in-law had a little plaque 
in her I, I, in the bathroom when I first courted my wife, and above the toilet, it said, "Blessed are the flexible, for they shall not be broken." And I said, I went out there. Now I knew that they'd been Christians their whole lives. So I said, "Is that a verse in the Bible?" And she said, no, but it's a principle. <laughs> and she was a very seasoned Christian. She knew how important it is that we just, we got to sometimes chill out and flex, go with the flow, you know, in, in the things of the Lord. That when I'm saying the flow, I mean the flow of his spirit. Just hang in there. Well, let me show you. When it comes to seeing our brother caught in a trespass, we, we have to be careful how we handle it. In fact, the scripture gives a, a couple good pointers on this actually from jesus himself my favorite if you if you want to know how to handle anything and jesus has talked about it go straight to that source because the lord knows what you need to do remember in matthew 18 he talks about um if you see uh your brother caught, caught in a trespass let me show you here turn to matthew 18 real quick i'm I, there's a couple spots in the scripture that I'd like to show you this morning about helping a brother that's caught. How many of you know anyone that's caught in a sin that you love? I mean, you, you wish that they weren't stuck in that sin. Maybe they're, 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 they're just trapped in something they've been addicted to, an addiction, and you're just like, Lord, help them. Get out of that. Well, here's what the Bible tells us to do. Jesus said, if your brother sins, it says, go to him. Oh, I'm sorry. This is for Matthew 18, verse 15. It says, go to him in private and, 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 and show him his fault. Okay, in private, not in front of everybody. Hey, stupid, you got a problem. You know, and make him feel even stupider. Is that a word, stupider? More stupidest? Most is stupidest. I don't know, whatever. English is the worst language, but you get the idea. You don't do it in front of everybody. You go to him in private. It says, and if he listens to you, then you've won your brother. And if he does not listen to you, Jesus then says, take, it says, two or more witnesses with you, so that by the mouth of two or three witnesses, every fact may be confirmed. That's an Old Testament quote there from Deuteronomy 10, verse 15, that when it comes to establishing a fact, you know, sometimes when people are caught in a trespass and you go to them and you tell them that, hey, you're in sin, brother, you're, it's like you're, you're caught in a snare. They're like, I don't see no snare. And they don't even realize it. It could be like, like you know, when, you're, when your shirt's stuck here on the chair and you're, you're, I don't have any problem. You don't have any problem because you haven't tried to stand up yet. But I'm looking at you going, it's caught. And you're gonna, it's going to cause you a problem. What problems are going to cause me? I don't know. What problems are going to cause you? I don't see any problem. Well, you, you, you don't see it because you sometimes don't look back. And you don't realize how blind you can become when you have a, 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 a snare, a fault that is holding you. But if you see your brother caught in a trespass, it says you go to him and you try to help him get freed. I mean, if you saw your brother caught in a trap, I don't know if any of you grew up like I did where we hunted and trapped our, our food. And, you know, if you're caught in a, a you know, th how many of you have seen a bear trap? Don't, I hope you never see one up like on your leg or anything, but those things are mean. They slap shut and, they, and they've got you. And even, even little, little, littler versions that are used for smaller game, they're, when they slap shut, don't they just grab on and hold on? They latch into the flesh and, and a person could be caught in it and they could be hurting. And you come along and say, hey, you got a trap on your ankle there. Did you notice? Now, sometimes they're very aware of their, of their problem. You, you're not really announcing anything new to them because they're, they can feel the pain of the thing they're caught in. The problem is they can't get the thing undone. You, those of you that have been around those traps, you, you realize if one ever snaps on your leg, what's the, what's the big flaw? You try to get it off. It, it, as you're trying to pass out from or, or beginning to pass out from the pain, you, you can't do it for yourself. You need someone else to come along and help open it and help you get out of the thing. And so the Lord has given us a way that we can compassionately look out for each other when we see someone trapped in a sin. We come along and say, hey, I see you're trapped. Can I help you? You know, maybe I can help free you from that thing. 
Let me let me pull pull the jaws back. Get your leg out quick. Now if they don't listen to you, and they tell you, I don't, I'm not. There's no trap. I'm not stuck in this. I could get out anytime I want. How many of you've heard that from your friends? I could get out of this anytime I want. I'm. I just. I like being here. Yeah. Right. Well, it says then take along two a, a, a witness or two, so that by the mouth of two or three witnesses, every fact would be confirmed. Now, do they always listen when you bring along a couple other folks? Most of the time, yes. From my Christian experience, I have found out that as a pastor, you don't you don't have to do this very often. You do it, and uh, wow, that's really loud. Sorry, I just I'm distracted by the flapping of the of the trash bags on our speakers. Th those are our waterproofing. Good, no. Let's just leave it. So, so you bring a, you bring along a couple witnesses with you, and the and and the interesting ha thing happens when you do that. The um, it, it's kind of an eye opener to the person. They're like, wow, it's not just one person that sees me with this trouble. Other people see this too and recognize it. Maybe I do have a problem. And Jesus says, if they don't listen to you when when you bring along two or more witnesses, he gives some more advice what to do. What 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 do we do then? He says, if they if they refuse to listen, then he says, tell it to the church. And if they re refuse to listen even to the church, he says, let them be like a Gentile or like a what? A tax collector. Now, a Gentile, if you're Jewish, do the Jews hang out with Gentiles? No. And if, if, if he says, let them be like a, a Gentile, you don't hang out with them and or a tax. How many? I find this very ironic because who's writing this epistle? This gospel, I'm sorry. Matthew. And what was Matthew's occupation before he came to follow Jesus? He was a tax collector. He said, did he know what it was like to have people not want to hang out with you? When, um, <laughs> man, here comes the tax collector. Run! You know, the people just did not want to hang out with a tax collector. And so... So we see Jesus says, let them be like that. The person who doesn't listen, don't hang out with them. It's a wake-up call. In the, in, the, in the letter to the Corinthians, Paul wrote, there was a man in sin. He said, I, I tell you, I've, I, I've already judged the sin like as if I was with you. Tell the guy, you know, talk to him first in private. They did. He didn't listen. Put him in front of the church. Put him out of the church. And, uh, and, and let it wake him up. Well, it woke him up. And uh, after it woke him up, Paul had to write Second Corinthians to say, excuse me, now that he's woke up, they wouldn't let him back in, by the way. They were doing such a good job of treating him like a tax collector. They're like, you just stay over there, buddy. That the Lord had to have Paul write a second letter and say, okay, okay, let him back in. You know, he can come back and fellowship with you now. So in Matthew's gospel, Jesus also spoke something that really helps my heart when it comes to helping someone out in sin. And, it, and, it, and it's very clearly put in Matthew chapter 7. He says, when you go to help someone in their sin, the very first thing you have to be careful of, it says, do not judge. We're not the judge of their sin. We don't pass condemnation for sin. We just recognize sin and we, we want to help someone who's in sin to get out of it because, well, the wages of sin is what? Death. And we don't want them to die. So we're not here to pass judgment on their sin. We're just here to recognize it as a, as a, a, a thing which will bring death to their life. And we want to help them get out of that so they can be freed. Well, we read in Matthew 7 that Jesus said, Do not judge lest you be judged. Verse 1. In verse 2 he says, for in the way that you judge, what will happen? That's the measure you will be judged by, right? And, and he says, by your standard of measure, it will be measured to you. He says, why do you look at the speck that's in your brother's eye and you don't notice something that is in your eye? What, what did he call it? A log or a beam. I love this. Jesus puts things in such good word pictures, doesn't he? He says, 
you see a little speck of sawdust in your brother's eye and you get all wiggy about it. Hey, brother, you got a speck. That's pine. I know it's pine. How do you know it's pine? Because I see got a pine tree hanging out of your eyeball, you know, looking right at the stump. And, and Jesus said, before you go to help your brother get the speck out of his eye, you got to get the, the beam out of your own eye. You can't even get close to your brother to help him if you got a big pole sticking out of your eye. What happened? I got a bee. Bye. Is it gone? Good. So when we go to our brother and we say, hey, let me help you with that spec. I don't know about you guys, but this whole study today, I intended to be able to pay a little bit of attention to how delicate it is of a procedure to help somebody who's caught in sin. And I say delicate because Jesus uses the eye as the thing to describe this. He says, you know, when your brother has a little speck in his eye. Now, how many of you have got a speck in your eye and you, and you need, you can't even get it out. Your, your eye, what? My eye just slams shut. It's like, oh, something in there. Just like when I started the sermon and the sand blew in my eyes. I'm like, oh. And the reaction is we close our eyes because that little speck, it, it, we're trying to get the, the tear ducts to do their job and start rinsing and get that thing out. And, but, but it only takes a little speck to render us like incapacitated. You could be doing really well and all of a sudden one little speck and boom, you're, you, you gotta, you're stopped in your tracks. And by the way, one little sin can do the same thing for you spiritually. Just one little sin and boom, you're, 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 you're paralyzed. Because you can't see to go in. And some people who are in sin, I hear other people talk about, did you see that brother? He's in sin. He is so blind. Doesn't he see? And I'm like, no, he doesn't see. Because he can't see. He's, he's um, blinded by the sin. There we go. Just leave it off right now unless the rain starts coming. Stuff is blowing everywhere. I better hurry wrap this up. For the <laughs> he can't see because the speck is it, it, it's rendering him it's rendering him in, in in that temporary paralysis that you feel when you get something in your eye. Now I know when I have a speck in my eye and I want it taken out and I can't get it out myself. I don't want some bozo who's I am here to save you from your speck. Let me, I got a shovel here. Let me dig that out. You know, and they just come at you with the, the crudest of tools. I want someone who has a delicate touch, who cares. First of all, I want someone who cares about me, really loves me, and wants me to get the speck out for my good, not for their entertainment. Because some people, when they help out with getting a speck out, they're laughing the whole time at your pain. Oh, stupid guy. <laughs> and they just make you feel horrible. I want my wife to do it because she has a delicate touch and she loves me. And it's one of those things, when you help your brother who's got a speck in his eye to help him get, get the speck out, you want to make sure that you let him know you love him or her. That you come in love and, and for care for that person. And you want to treat it like it's eye surgery. It's delicate. It's not something you come along and, and, and gruffly do it. Well, I, I read it to you in Galatians. Paul said, when you see your brother in this trespass, it says, go to him in a spirit of what? Of gentleness. Go in there and, 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 and say, hey, um, could I help you with this? You know, you got, you, you, you got to restore one in a spirit of gentleness. Now, I know when I see some brothers in sin, especially if it's a sin that annoys me. I, I shouldn't say that that would ever happen to a pastor, that I'd be annoyed with somebody else's sin. But, but I confess it does happen. And some of these guys, I just want to go up and spiritually gib-slap them on the back of the head. 
And that, not in gentleness either. Not even a light gib slap. You know, those of you who watch NCIS, you know when, uh, when 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 Gibbs comes up behind Dinozo and he 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 he, he gives him one of these. You know, pack, wake up. I I kind of think sometimes guys in sin, I just think you need to wake up, man. Pack. And the Lord goes, that's not gentle. Is that what you would want? Done to, if you want to know how to do this, just think, how would you want someone to do it to you? How would you want them to come to you and help you get rid of a speck in your eye? Would you want them to come gently and in a spirit of gentleness, hey, could I help you? Let, here, sit down, relax. Let, let me help you get that out. And before you go to help them get their speck out, you better make sure you got all the beams out of your own eye so you can see clearly enough to take care of their little speck. Yes, it's easy to recognize specks of sin that we have had in our lives. But we still got to be gentle about how we help others out of that sin. And so Jesus says, how can you take the, say to your brother, let me take that speck out of your eye, verse 4 of, of Matthew 7. A, 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 he says, and behold, there's a log in your own eye. He says, you hypocrite. First take the log out of your own eye and then you'll see clearly enough to take the speck out of your brother's eye. Now this this passage, by the way, has a it's not a one time deal. This is if, if you've read the Gospels, you know this this story um, reappears. It gets repeated. And anytime something's been repeated, I've told you before, it's not because God has a broken record and didn't he ran out of material. He didn't know what to say. There's a reason he repeats stuff. Why? Because we need it. And if you've heard this sermon before, it's okay. Probably a repeater will not hurt you. Maybe you'll pick up something, a little subtlety that you didn't pay attention to on a previous. Maybe there wasn't enough wind blowing to keep you awake, but now you're awake. Let me show you in Luke's gospel. I'm going to end today with this because it is getting, I can see the gals getting cold. I feel, I, I'm like, oh, this is glorious. This is like so cool and comfortable. But Dottie will turn into a popsicle and we'll lose her, so I better hurry. Sorry, dear. In, in Luke's gospel, same account. This is Luke 6, verse 41. Why do you look at the speck in your brother's eye? Do not notice the log in your own eye. And how can you say to your brother, brother, let me take out that speck that's in your eye when you yourself do not see the log in your own eye? You hypocrite. First take the log out of your own eye, then you will see clearly enough to take the speck out of your brother's eye. For it it says, there is no good tree which produces bad fruit, nor on the other hand a bad tree which produces good fruit. For each tree is known by its own fruit. For men do not gather from from figs from thorns nor do they pick grapes from a briar bush for the good man out of the good treasure of his heart brings forth what is good the evil man out of the evil treasure brings forth what is evil for the mouth speaks that which fills the heart isn't it interesting Jesus is talking about these specks that need to be removed and then he switches right to this fruit analogy you know if uh, you're a good tree you make good fruit. If you're a bad tree, you make bad fruit. Why is he going to the fruit tree analogy right from the speck analogy? I, I suggest Jesus knew what he was doing. Because every time you talk about sin in people's lives, they're like, how do I know if it's really a sin? Or, or maybe it's just sub- it's subjective. Isn't sin just, uh, well, what, what sin for him might not be sin for someone else? Or, and Jesus goes, look. Let's look at a fruit tree. If it's good fruit, if it's a good tree, it's good fruit. If it's a bad tree, it's bad. How do you know whether it is? How do we really know? And Jesus cuts it right down to the most simplest thing. He says, out of a man's mouth, he'll speak what's in his what? His heart. I've been going over this verse repeatedly, but for... For the young ones, I don't mind repeating this verse. It's so important. He says that that which uh, uh, the the heart, a good man out of the good treasure of his heart will bring forth what is good. The evil man out of the evil treasure will bring forth what is evil. For the mouth will simply speak 
that which fills the heart. We got these young ones trying to figure out, I don't know if that person really likes me. I don't know in their heart do they love me, you know. And, and they're going through the, the, the courtship days trying to find out, is that the right person? And, and they seem nice on the outside. And I'm like, they go, but how do I know what's in the inside? What's the clue? Listen to what comes out of this. Girls, you want to know whether that guy has a good heart? Just listen to what comes out of his mouth. And the same goes for you guys. You want to know what's in that gal's heart? All you got to do is listen to what comes. If, if junk is coming out of their mouth, what's it tell you about their heart? Filled with junk. If good stuff's coming out of their mouth, then Jesus said it. And does Jesus know what the source of the words are that come out of our mouths? Yeah, of course. But do we pay attention to that? I have people that come to me, well, Pastor, when we were recording, they were so nice and, and they said some nice things. And every once in a while, there was a few bad words, you know, but I figured it's no big deal. You know, you got to take the bones with the meat and spit out the, you know. <laughs> Look, if you don't want bones, pay attention. What's co what, what, what are they saying? Because what comes out of this thing is that which fills this. And it's so important that we pay attention. When especially we have probably one of the greatest challenges today is the kids trying to figure out their courtship. How, how to, who to be with, and, and they're struggling. And the Lord's going, I got an answer. Just listen if you can. And, and I'll end with this. Jesus always ended with it. Let those who have an ear to what? To hear, let them hear what the Spirit says. If you can hear it, just know God's Spirit's trying to tell us the important stuff to know. And I feel, I feel moisture. Anyone else? Let's close in prayer. Lord, we're thankful that we got to be together. Help us pack this up before it gets all wet. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Go grab something and run it to the parking lot. Let's go in peace. Mahalo for joining us. If you'd like more information about us, go to our website, AmazingGraceKona.com, and click the link to follow us on Facebook. That's AmazingGraceKona.com. Mahalo and God bless.